Hello friends, so once again welcome to my channel and in this video we will continue with our discussion on IEEE numbers representation for floating point numbers. In the last video we have seen when we represent a floating point number in IEEE it has got three components. One is the sign of the number, second one is exponent and the third one is your mantissa. Then we were discussing about, about the bias exponent where we were representing that means we were, uh, we are representing our exponent using your positive numbers only. But in actual exponent of a number may be positive or negative, right? But we are going to represent only as a positive number. For that, we are using what? One bias. What is the value of bias in general? If the width of my uh, exponent field is k bits, then the length of your bias will be 2 to the power k minus 1, right? So that we have seen. Then we'll continue our discussion in our bias exponent. See, if it is using 8 bits, then our exponent, the actual means uh, in IEEE single precision, if we are using 8 bits, then the uh, if it is only positive numbers, then the number will value will range from 0 to 255 because we are using 8 bits. Now, the another point is there, this value 0 and 255. See, the range of values is from 0 to 255. But the boundary values, that means the lowest value, that is 0, and the highest value, that is 255. These two uh, boundary values, we are not going to use for any normal floating point numbers. These two values, we are going to use for representing one special numbers. Whenever we are working with numbers, sometimes we come across many exception conditions. Exception conditions means what? During runtime, some errors occurs, and that is not within our control due to some erroneous situation, due to some wrong inputs and all, we used to get some uh, errors. And those we used to term as what? Runtime uh, that exceptions. So to represent some exceptional situations, we preserve the boundary values of my exponent, that is that 0 and 255, right? But 0 and 255, we are not going to use for our normal numbers, rather we are preserving them for representing special numbers. And what are the special numbers we are going to represent and all that I will discuss next. So we are going to store exponent in the range 1 to 254. See, the possible value is from 0 to 255. But for a normal number, that floating point number, this 0 and 255 will not be a value for your exponent that I need to remember my exponent value will range from 1 to 254. Done. Then see if, see, so if the exponent is represented using a number of bits, we are going to take the biases 2 to the power k minus 1 minus 1. Another minus 1 we are doing. Why we are doing it? Because the boundary values we are not going to represent here. So my exponent, my bias will be here 2 to the power k minus 1 minus 1. What is k my? What is the value of k here? 8. So uh, this one. So 2 to the power 8 minus 1 is 7. Then as a whole the minus 1. So it will be 127. So our exponent, sorry, our bias value will be 127. So whatever exponent we get for a actual number, with that we will add 127. And that we are going to store in binary in our e dash field. That is the exponent field of our IEEE format. So suppose my original exponent will be what? Minus 126. This is the least number I'm going to have, right? Because boundary values I'm not using. So that um, zero is I'm not using. So minus 126 is my actual exponent. This is the least value I can have in my exponent. So minus 126 plus 127 will give me what? Excess in 127, it will be one. Minus 125 plus 127 will be what? 2. And then 127 plus 127 will be 254. So this is the range of bias. Sorry, this is the range of exponent we are going to have in our IEEE format for a normal number, right? So my exponent part is clear now. Now see, whenever we are representing a number in IEEE format, our number is normalized number. So this is also a new term for us. What is a normalized number? That to implicit normalized number. 
So uh, next I will be discussing about implicit normalized number. Say one binary number is this one, 1001.01. 0, 0, 1. 0, 1. This is a this is my actual number, and then this number I will first normalize. After normalizing it only, I am going to store it IEEE. So how to do it normalizing, right? Normalization. Then to perform the implicit normalization, we need to bring the decimal point to the left of first one in the number. So see, this is my number here to the left of first one. That first one is decided from MSB side, most significant base side. So here, this decimal point is here. This decimal point, I need to bring to one place, two place. See here, one place, two place, three place. I need to shift it by three bit positions to the left. Then only the decimal point will be to the right of the first one. And then only the number will become what? Normalized number, right? That I need to do. And whenever I do changes in my uh, position of your decimal point, then I need to multiply the number by 2 to the power either positive exponent or negative exponent. The way we used to do for decimal numbers, right? So same thing here I need to do and it is your binary number. So I will multiply by 2 to the power that exponent. So see here, this number was this one and after normalizing the decimal point will be to the right of first one. So it has come here. How many positions I have shifted? means uh, this one two three so three times i have done it so i'm multiplying it two to the power three and sometimes suppose i need to take it to the right suppose here point zero 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 one is there then the decimal point will be brought to the right then i need to multiply by two to the power i i is the number of positions i have shifted the decimal point then only the number will become normalized number the point is clear so now Next, I'm going to discuss the rules that I'm going to use to convert a given decimal number into IEEE format. One decimal number is there that I need to store in IEEE format. So how I'm going to do that, that I'm going to explain step by step. So first, convert the given number into binary. One decimal number is given to us, that number I need to convert into binary. So suppose the number is say, uh, eight point. Uh, the number is say uh, this one. The number is nine point two five. So what is nine? One zero zero one is nine. Then this point two five. I need to take it into binary. How to do it? What I have to do? This we have seen in our digital logic course. Point two five into two. You will do. Then what it will become? Point five zero. Before decimal, what is there? Zero. Then this point five zero into two. I have to do. Then it will become what? 1.00 the point is whatever is after the decimal that i will multiply by 2 and after the, in the, after doing that whatever result i will get in that whatever is after the decimal point again i will multiply by 2 this process i will repeat till whatever is there to the right of decimal point becomes zero because zero into two if you do you'll get zero so no point repeating the process so this how we will do and then to write the binary, we will write whatever is there before the decimal point from top to bottom. So it will be 0 0.01. This is how one number is converted into binary. Decimal number, this integer part you know, so I have not explained. This part, just for revision, I have told you, right? So convert the number into binary. Then second point, normalize the number, right? If decimal point is taken to the left by I position, multiply the number by 2 to the power i and if the decimal point is taken to the right then multiply by 2 to the power minus 1 if you are taking to the right and if you are taking it to the left in our that example we have taken it to the left so 2 to the power i what is i how many positions you have missed taken to the left or the right right so that is my normalizing the number done after normalizing the number if the number is positive then your S in your number three parts were there. S, E, and M. Then S is what? Zero. If as a whole the number is positive, that is 9.25, then S is zero. If it is minus 9.25, then S is one. And please do remember, whenever we are converting into IEEE, 
do not go for two's complement number system right simply whatever sign is there accordingly as is 0 or 1 then next part is exponent exponent is represented using access format that is bias exponent so what is my bias in for ieee single precision 127 so 127 will be added to the exponent whatever exponent here i have got that is i with that i i will add what 127 that and then that value whatever i will get i'll convert it into binary i will write it using 8 bits for e dash because e dash is represented using 8 bits next last step that mantissa mantissa what will be the value of mantissa my number is now normalized 1.0110 something like this and 2 to the power 3 is there then what is your exponent 3 plus 127 right what is your mantissa this part only this part this one point is not stored as part of the number that is implicitly we know it is there right so though we are representing mantissa using the 20 uh, that 23 bits but actual exponent uh, actual mantissa is actually 24 bits 23 bit explicitly we are storing and we know the number is normalized that means one point the mantissa is actually there and this part only we are storing this is implicit we know so this part will be stored in the mantissa field how many bits are there 23 but in my case how many bits are there 0 1 1 0 only 4 bits are there i need to represent using 23 bits so what i will do i'll append some zeros to the left or to the right if I, uh, it will be to the right only because it is after decimal, right? So you cannot add zeros here. Then it will change the precision. So you need to add the zeros here. How many zeros? Here it is four. So 19 more zeros. If you will add, then it will become using. Uh, it will become of 23 bits. So this is how one number will be converted into I triple E single precision, right? If it is double precision, then what will be my exponent? exponent uh, that access format it is 1023 right 11 bits is there so 2 to the power 11 minus 1 minus 1 so it is what 2 to the power 10 minus 1 1024 minus 1 is 1023 so there access 1023 need to be added and your mantissa field is what 52 bits so whatever is your mantissa if it is not of 52 bits append zeros to make it of your length uh, 52 bits and where you will add to the right of your actual mantissa not to the left of it right so this much only i need to remember after that we can apply the rules and we can convert any given number into ieee format so in the next video we will see the examples right now we have completed the steps or the rules to convert it next we will see with examples this particular concept so till then thank you and if you are liking my explanations, then please do not forget to like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a great day.